Okay, I want to thank everyone for joining us this morning. Uh, I think this is the 11th in our Build Year Simulation Mechanical IQ uh, webinar series. Uh, today we're going to be talking about what's new in Nastran INCAD 2016 and Autodesk Nastran 2016. Uh, my name is Andrew Sautarelli. I'm a technical support specialist here for our mechanical simulation products. And uh, with me this morning is uh, Mitch Muncy, the product manager for uh, the Autodesk Nastran and Autodesk Nastran in CAD products. Um, to get things started, we're going to kick it off with a few uh, poll questions here. Uh, so because this is the simulation mechanical um, IQ uh, series, um, you know, what version of simulation mechanical are you using? Um, 2016 launched uh, April 7th, I believe. Um, so that, that version's already out. It looks like we're getting a lot of uh, feedback here that uh, most of you have made the jump to 2016, although a few of you are still on uh, 2014 and 2015. And we'll keep that open for just another minute here. And we'll share those results. So it looks like about half of you are on 2016, and the rest of you are on either 14 or 15. It's good to see that we don't have anyone uh, still using uh, Algor 23.1 or uh, some of the older releases there. Okay, and we'll go to the next um, option here. Yeah. So with uh, Simulation Mechanical 2015 R1, we did introduce um, the Autodesk Nastran solver technology um, to Simulation Mechanical. Um, so just curious, how many of you have actually taken advantage uh, of that new option there? Um, so for those of you that aren't sure how to use it, you can um, click the drop down now under Run Simulation, and it'll give you the option to uh, run with Nastran. Um, about eight or nine different uh, analysis types that do support the Nastran solvers. Um, so not every um, solution type is available there. Looks like we got most of you to vote here, and we'll just share that. So it looks like about 20% uh, or so have been using the uh, the Nastran. Uh, solvers in 2015 R1 or 2016, and 80% uh, of you haven't. Um, so this will be a good introduction here um, with Mitch to kind of talk about, you know, what are the, the options um, and what's new with the, the Nastran solver technology. Um, on to our next slide here. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, you know, we run the uh, simulation mechanical um, IQ webinar series um, every month. Um, and, you know, it's an opportunity for us to discuss, um, you know, issues that we see come up often and solutions to them. Um, and it also gives you an opportunity in the, the second half or the, the latter half of the, uh, the webinar. Uh, we have a Q&A session. So if you have any questions that you want to ask, you know, not necessarily related to uh, the webinar topic, um, you can go ahead and ask that. Um, so some of our popular webinars have been, um, the introduction to Nastran INCAD for simulation mechanical users uh, that we did in the fall of this past year. Um, we also did the um, simulation mechanical 2015 R1 uh, with Autodesk Nastran uh, technology in August. And we also had a introduction to MES analysis um, this past summer. Uh, coming up in uh, July here, we'll be uh, talking about uh, the limitation of using uh, forces as mass, mass in simulation mechanical. Um, so we'll be skipping uh, June and then July. We'll have this um, session there. Um, so you can sign up for the webinar series through uh, SimHub. Um, so if you go to autodesk.com forward slash SimHub, um, there'll be an events landing page. Um, and you can uh, find all of our webinars, not only for Simulation Mechanical, uh, but for Nastran, INCAD, um, Moldflow, CFD, and Com uh, Helios uh, Composite and Composite Analysis there. Um, we also have a Autodesk help webinar page. We're also sending out uh, direct emails to those of you that have opened uh, technical support cases uh, within the past uh, several months. And as always, we do post these on the Autodesk Sim360 YouTube channel, um, and we will make this presentation available um, after the, the session has ended. And all of these uh, images here will have links uh, that you can go to, to to find those pages. Um, so what's 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 new with simulation mechanical? 
Um, just yesterday, um, we launched a supplemental results app for Simulation Mechanical 2016. Um, so this has enhanced support for NASTRAN contact settings. Uh, so for, for those of you that are using the NASTRAN solvers in Simulation Mechanical uh, 2015 and 2016, um, the development team has worked really hard to um, open up some more capabilities to um, modify those NASTRAN contact uh, cards. Um, so that's there. There's also some really great uh, post-processing features with regard to reaction forces and moments. Um, so you'll see in the image at the top there, we now get a tabular view if you inquire uh, a series of nodes. Um, and you can see all of the reaction forces um, in the X, Y, and Z, as well as reaction moments in the X, Y, and Z at once. And I believe down the bottom there, that's actually going to sum up all those um, results there in, in one easy-to-read format. Um, you know, previously in March, we retired the Autodesk subscri Subscription Center and moved over to Autodesk Account. Um, so just autodesk.com forward slash account um, to access that. We've um, repackaged Simulation Flex. So previously, uh, SimFlex included all three products, and now that's kind of been broken down into a Simulation Mechanical Flex, Simulation CFD Flex, and Simulation Mold Flow Flex. Um, and of course, we launched our 2016 products um, in April, um, so last month. And here we just have a few of the um, most commonly used and, and looked at um, articles for Simulation Mechanical. Um, also a breakdown of now what's included with that Simulation Flex offering. Um, we can see here that um, you know we don't have a Simulation, Mechan uh, simulation Robot Structural Flex option. But now we do have the SimMec Flex, CFD Flex, and Moldflow Flex. All those still do include advanced support, so you get access to web and phone support and um, you know, varying amounts of cloud credits. Um, so at this point, I'm going to hand it over to uh, to Mitch, um, and Mitch is going to run through um, what's new in uh, Simulation, uh, excuse me, Autodesk Nastran 2016 and Autodesk Nastran InCAD 2016. Great, thanks, Andrew. Good morning, good afternoon, uh, everyone. For those of you who don't know who I am, um, my name is Mitch Muncy, and just like Nastran, I'm relatively new to Autodesk. Um, I was executive vice president at NEI Software, overseeing sales, marketing, and things like that. So now I'm the product manager for the Nastran products. So I'm just going to take a few minutes, go through some of the new features that we added this release, and right now we're going to start with Autodesk Nastran. Before I do that, just a quick check, Andrew. Can you Let's see my screen okay? Everything looks great, Mitch. All right, perfect. Thanks. So first thing that we want to take a look at is um, pyramid elements. And I think one of the most exciting improvements in simulation mechanical has been the integration in Astran. I see you know, not everybody's been able to take advantage of that yet. Um, maybe not on the latest version. You know, still very familiar with the, the old solvers. But um, as exciting as it has been for you guys, I think it's been uh, equally exciting on our side just to support some of the cool technology that it has. So the pyramid elements are a real good example of that. These are um, primarily used for hex dominant meshing. So um, under, the assumption, under the assumption that the highest stresses are going to be on the outside, uh, you can get really good high quality hex elements on, on the surface and then use tetrahedral elements on the inside. And to effectively transition from a, a hex element to a tet, you need the, the pyramid element. So we support that now in NASTRAN, so you can take full advantage of that with the, uh, the meshing capabilities. Next one's probably not as important for, for simulation mechanical customers, and it's more for our existing customer base. Uh, the workflow that we have inside simulation mechanical doesn't really use the editor. Uh, it's really meant for editing the NASTRAN bulk data file directly. But the, the big thing that we did there is improve the performance by adding 64-bit capabilities. So in addition to that, we improved the open and load times for, for large models, uh, as well as some of the uh, animation performance that we had there as well. So for buckling, we did a few things. Uh, first, we added support for linear contact and buckling. And for those of you not familiar with the way that we do linear contact in NASTRAN, is you, know, you, you typically will have um, contact is considered, realistically, it's like a nonlinear solution. So um, you, if you, but if you don't have large displacements and you don't have nonlinear materials, 
and you know the contact real, relatively starts out pretty much in contact. Uh, linear contact works really well because what it'll do is it'll do everything is linear, but it'll iteratively solve the contact scenario. So if you imagine like a pin inside of a hole and you're pushing it to one side, it's going to want to make contact on one side of that pin, but separate off on the other. And so what linear contact allows you to do is it'll iteratively solve that until it's got the right contact elements and then just bond the side that's going to be in contact. So this allows for more realistic contact scenario without running a full nonlinear analysis. And for anyone that has tried to do a nonlinear buckling example, you can understand just how helpful this is going to be. Um, the, the next thing that we added was inertia relief support for buckling. Um, again, inertia relief, if you haven't used that before, is the ability to run an analysis without a constraint. So the idea is that you've got some sort of a balanced load. Um, typically it's going to be used in aerospace or floating ship structures or something like that. So you don't have a real good constraint, but um, you, you use inertia relief. And now we, we support that in, in buckling as well. So another request that we've gotten quite a few times from our customers is random response uh, and composites. So it, the idea is that when you run a random response analysis, you get all the different you know, displacements and stresses and things like that. But now, when you look at composite materials, in NASTRAN you have the ability to output uh, stresses and you know, failures, uh, failure index and you know, allowable stresses you know, per ply. So if you've got 24 plies, you're going to have you know, 24 different unique sets of output. And when you do random response analysis, you have output at every frequency step. You have every, the same thing repeated for every random response step. And now if you kind of multiply all that together, you end up with these uh, result files that are you know, hundreds and hundreds of gigabytes. So one of the things we did was we kind of tried to avoid doing that at first because just the amount of output that was generated. But we finally, we finally went in and added it. Uh, and we also have, for our random response analysis, a lot of different ways of you know, suppressing that output. So like on our composite entry, you can say whether you want stresses or not. If you want, um, you can turn off frequency data. You know, you don't want to look at the, 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 free, the output at the frequency. You've already run through that once. You don't need to do it for every random response analysis set. So there's a lot of different ways we have to control that output. The next one that we added is uh, a feast eigen solver. And this really helps us for a certain type of problem. So when you're doing a normal modes analysis or a natural frequencies, and you're looking for a frequency range that's, you know, doesn't start at zero, that's higher. Um, so let's say you wanted to go from 1,000 hertz to 2,000 hertz, or 500 hertz to 1,000 hertz. Um, this, this helps us solve those a lot faster. Uh, and it's, it's a, from the testing that we've done, it's looking like it's about three to four times faster. And then, it, you know, rounding out some of the capability improvements, we've also added support for the C-Track 6 element. This is a higher order uh, axisymmetric element. We've always been able to do uh, export deformed mesh models for linear static analysis. So what that means is you run the analysis, and then what you get as a result of that analysis is a NASTRAN bulk data file with the nodes and you know more or less, more or less the nodes move to the deformed location, and the reason that's good is you know customers will will want to see what that model looks like in that deformed location. Maybe you want to take that model and export it to an STL file or something along those lines, and then you know work with it further. Now the, the interesting thing is we can do this with a nonlinear analysis as well. So we've also had the ability to do pre-stress static, pre-stress modal directly using, we have uh, associated solution sequences for that in NASTRAN, but we also have support through StatSub as well. And, and in addition to the capability improvements, we've made a number of changes to improve productivity. So we've added large displacement support for shear panel elements. Uh, we've also improved the subspace eigensolver performance for large number modes. And then we've added better support for multiple processors. So before I jump on to the next session, is there any questions that you guys have on, on NASTRAN, specifically the NASTRAN solver?
so it doesn't look like we have any questions right now, Mitch, but uh, just to give everyone a heads up, you can use the question bar on the, on the side. Um, so we're staffed with uh, several specialists from the support team to help answer any questions, and um, we'll you know, uh, discuss those live, obviously, um, with Mitch as well. Okay. Um, so yeah. don't hesitate to ask anything. Yep. Well, if, we, if there's no questions at this time, we'll jump ahead and we'll get to those at the end. So, so next I want to take a look at some of the new features that we have in Autodesk Nastran and NCAD 2016. Uh, you know, I, I think you guys have probably seen some of the, the webinars that have been out there, but just real quickly, uh, Autodesk Nastran and NCAD provides Nastran-based finite element analysis for both SOLIDWORKS and Inventor. So this is linear statics, normal modes, buckling, but it also does more advanced physics like thermal, nonlinear, advanced dynamics, and fatigue. So taking a look at some of the new features that we have there, in Nastran we used to apply moment loads directly to nodes, and this could be very confusing for our, our customers because if you selected that face, it would apply the moment load to all the nodes on that face and then do nothing. So the reason for that, solid elements only have three degrees of freedom, X, Y, and Z, so applying rotations to these really would have no impact. So one of the things we used to do to get around this was using rigid elements. You could create a rigid element at the center of that face, apply the moment to that, and then it would transfer the appropriate loads to your surface. Uh, this could also have a negative effect if the rigid element was over stiffening your structure. So now when you apply the moment load, we're calculating those loads directly and applying them without the need of a rigid element. So this means you get exactly the load that you're looking for without any of the, the, the downsides that we had before. Uh, along those same lines, we added support for remote loading. So same thing, you, you don't need to include additional structure to get the load correct. You can pick a point in space where the load is being applied uh, and then the surface edge or point or wherever you want that uh, load to be applied to and then the remote force is applied. So the same thing, we, we also used to do this with a rigid element, but now we can apply the load directly and the appropriate forces are calculated automatically for you. So uh, with Nastran, contact is used in all analysis types. So we supported automatic contact on the element bases created directly in the solver at runtime. So this was very robust. You had a lot of options and how to control that but it didn't allow you to see the contact surfaces before the analysis was ran. So what we've done is we've created um, automatic contact where you can specify the type of contact that you want to use, the tolerant tolerance that you want to search, it's stored under the, uh, the analysis settings, and then when you click generate contact, it'll go and find all those for you. So again, you can adjust that in the analysis settings if you want. Now this one's relatively simple, but it actually helps out quite a bit. The, we have a new meshing dialog that shows exactly what's going on through the overall process. So the way that meshing works for a, a, a type of solid mesh is it's going to generate the surface elements on the outside, and then it's going to grow the solid, solid elements inward to generate the tetrahedral mesh. So it's more for guys like me who've accidentally missed a decimal when setting up the mesh size. Uh, let's say you wanted to do 0.1 as your mesh size, you put accidentally put 0.01. This means the edges are 10 times smaller than you wanted, and then the face elements are 100 times smaller, and then the solid elements are actually 1,000 times too small. So you, the idea here is that you'll be able to see that first mesh it tries to, or the first face it tries to mesh that has taken a lot longer than you'd hoped for, and you can go ahead and cancel that and fix it. So we've, we've also made a few improvements to the options that we have for XY plotting. So now we can plot uh, output as a function of the nodal or elemental location and then filter the data based on what's being selected. Um, this one's pretty important. It, it's, it was one of those little things that we added that has a very large impact and the more I use it, the more I love it. Uh, it's relatively simple. but when you're creating loads and constraints, you can right-click in the select, selected entities box and make sure uh, the type of entity that you want to use is the one the load's being applied to. You know, it, this helps make sure that you're only picking the, the ones that you want to use. Now, this is a, one that's been there for a little bit longer, but I, I did want to mention it again, is that we've moved in CAD from an add-in inside of Inventor to an environment. 
So this means instead of when it was an add-in, it was always loaded and always listening and always trying to, uh, you know, kind of act on the model. And now it's only when you're inside of that environment, and that really helps that overall CAD performance. Now we've also added the ability to probe the results. So this is one of the, one of the big requests on the idea station. Um, oftentimes when you're plotting results, you want to know exactly what the value is at a particular location. So with probing, you can interactively investigate your model. Uh, we've had something similar inside of NCAD. You could right click on the element, and then there was a query. And that was kind of restricted to the particular node or element. But with the probe, it's right there. It's exposed on the ribbon, very easy access. And you can pick anywhere on the model, and it's going to uh, interpolate the results. So uh, Autodesk Nastran, again, in CAD, is going to store the finite element data inside of the CAD model or assembly model if it's an assembly. Uh, so this includes loads, constraints, mesh, things like that. The one thing it doesn't include is the results file. So this allows us to store the data inside the CAD model without increasing the file size significantly. So n now when you enter and exit that environment, it's going to automatically load this result file for you. So this is another thing that we can control in the settings if we don't want it to load or uh, automatically, because it does take a little bit of time to read that in. But uh, uh, it's something that can be done automatically, so you don't have to go and do that every time you enter or exit the environment. So another thing that we've done is we've, we've exposed the units. So we have always had the ability to do units. It was kind of hidden in the analysis settings for NCAD previously, but now it's directly on the tree. You can double click it and edit it. Um, and the important thing is we have a default unit set so that if you're just using the default settings, it's going to inherit the, the units that we have in the CAD system. But if you want to override that for simulation, you can just pick whatever unit system you want, it'll, and you'll do that. And if you switch back and forth between the units, uh, it'll update the, the model for you. Another little thing that we did is we updated the contact terminology. So you know, we re realized that we've got a lot of folks that are using Inventor Professional uh, and other simulation tools, and we've kind of got a standard you know, terminology that we use for contact, and we wanted to make sure that this was similar. So we switched you know, it over, you see the separation bonded, you know, the different sliding, no separation. And for the, the Nastran folks uh, that are used to the old Nastran terminology, if there's hover text, so as you hover over it, it'll actually tell you uh, what that originally was. We also made the material dialog a little bit easier to access. So um, that way you can import materials from the material library. You can also use the load database button to create your own custom material library or edit your own you know, material library so you can have your own you know, hand set, you know, a handful of materials that you like to use on a regular basis and just pull it in from there. And then the last one is we added a, a new default template for factor of safety. Uh, we've always really, you know, just kind of left it at the, the in the customer's hands to define, you know, you run your analysis, you get your displacements, you get your, your stresses, and then figure out what does that mean to you? Is that, you know, where is it failing? What's your allowables? You've got some sort of spec that you're designing to. Um, but we've seen a lot of requests come in for, for the factor of safety. And so we added this default plot template. It's really nice because it'll automatically reverse the scale on the contour as well. So, you know, keeping in mind that the red is red is bad as blue is good, we kind of switched that around. So now the lower factor of safety actually shows up as red. All right, I think that's pretty much all I had to, to run through today. So um, I appreciate everyone that was able to, to join us and hang out and answer any questions that you guys have. Awesome. Thanks so much, Mitch. So we did have a, a couple of questions come in uh, while you were talking here. And, um, so uh, one of them was, um, is the full NEI functionality or Autodesk Nastran functionality um, available um, to current simulation mechanical users, um, either through the SimMec interface or through another means? Um, so I think the, the answer to that is yes. So everyone with a simulation mechanical 2015 R1 license or 2016 license has access um, to the Autodesk Nastran editor. 
um, to allow you to make modifications to the bulk data files and you get access um, to all the functionality, I think except for one or two things um, from uh, what was previously NEI and ASTRAN. Um, let's see. Um, so one user wanted to see how we can access um, the NASTRAN interface, the NASTRAN GUI um, through some mech. Um, so I'll take uh, control here, Mitch, and I'll make myself presenter. And we'll show my screen. So there's a couple different ways that we can go about this. Um, so first, um, if you want to open up the editor directly, um, you can simply go into your program files, um, Autodesk, uh, simulation 2016 um, Nastran and then editor and we can open up the editor this way um, and we'll see if we have got a creep model that I've been working on here um, so this is the the Autodesk Nastran um, editor that that Mitch was talking about with some of those performance enhancements in 2016 um, and the switch to 64 bit so you can see it's it's not a, a, a rich kind of a GUI like some mechanical where you can do all your pre and post um, it's it's more of a, a text editor, and then you do have some post processing capabilities um, as well. Um, and then there's two ways within Simulation Mechanical um, to access uh, the, the NASTRAN solvers. So here I've got a, a modal analysis set up, pretty simple. Um, but we can actually right um, left click here, and now we have the option to run with NASTRAN. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to um, convert the simulation mechanical database to a, a NASTRAN uh, bulk data file, and then it'll run that with the, the NASTRAN solvers. Um, and then we also do have the option, if we go to export, um, we can export to the Autodesk NASTRAN editor. Um, so we'll give this a try, and uh, we'll just type modal. So what it's going to do, it's going to run a check model here, uh, which will generate the, uh, the, the database necessary to to be converted. And you can see there real quickly it converted and now we've got a, a Nastran bulk data file that opens up in the um, Nastran editor and we can select run if we wanted to. Now all of this um, for the uh, seven or eight analysis types that are supported in some mechanical um, we can generate automatically um, or we can run those through the some mechanical interface. So it looks like we've got an issue here with surface contact um, Let's see, so we are generating contact, but we don't have any other parts in there, so we can just delete that um, the contact generate card. And now we can run the analysis. Okay. So we've got results here. And we'll take a look. And you can see all the different result vectors that are available. Um, so we'll take a look at total translation. And we'll enable the contours. Also enable the form shape. And now you can see the uh, deform shape there. Oop. Got a little graphics glitch there. Uh, so let's see if we got some more uh, questions here. All right, so um, another question was about um, Nastran NCAD and uh, obtaining that functionality. So Nastran NCAD is a separate product than um, Autodesk Nastran. So Autodesk Nastran NCAD sits within uh, Inventor, um, and it's not a part of your license for Simulation Mechanical 2015 R1 or Simulation Mechanical 2016. Um, so let me see, I can open up a simple part here. Um, this rod file and what what it does it it gives you access to um, about 20, 20 plus different uh, Nastran solvers all embedded within uh, your CAD environment um, and that's just right through the uh, environments tab and then we have the Nastran in CAD option there um, so this is just a, a simple one part model um, but in CAD really excels at doing um, assemblies um, and once you make changes in your CAD geometry, that directly translates into your FEA environment here. Um, 
Let's see what else we have for questions here. Uh, so we can we can go back and run this um, with sim with Nastran in the uh, sim mechanical environment. We can see we're generating or viewing the output file now from the Nastran, which is uh, slightly different than what you're you may be used to with uh, the simulation mechanical solvers. And now we can cycle through our results here. Okay. All right, are they, we'll give everyone a minute here to ask any other questions. It looks like the stream has kind of run out here. Um, oh, so um, one uh, important thing to note, um, the uh, call for proposals for um, Autodesk University 2015, uh, the call for proposals for classes closes uh, this coming Tuesday. Um, so for anyone interested in submitting a proposal, um, you want to make sure you get that submitted by Tuesday. And I think if we just go to uh, pull up the website here, this.com. Oh, it looks like it wants to pull up. There we go. There is an option here, call for proposals. Um, so there, there may be, um, you know, something that you is unique to your um, industry that you think is interesting. Um, so I know a lot of people do pressure vessel analysis. That would make a great class proposal um, for AU. Um, how to use ASME code with simulation mechanical or Nastran NCAD or Nastran um, would be a great option there. Um, but it could be as, as simple as um, how you guys use simulation in your, your organization to, to optimize your workflows or optimize um, designs. Um, so we have another question here um, from William. Are there any videos available for um, Autodesk uh, Nastran model creation slash analysis um, using the Autodesk Nastran um, editor uh, user interface? Um, so I don't think we have any um, any videos regarding that. Um, really, the standalone Nastran solvers are meant to be paired with a, uh, a pre or post processing uh, program. Um, so I know in the past a lot of users had used uh, FEMAP, uh, and obviously we're um, opening up a lot of capabilities to do most of that pre and post processing with simulation mechanical. Um, I'd say to you know, manually create a model within auto, uh, the, the Nastran editor. Um, if you were to start from scratch, probably wouldn't be a, a feasible workflow. Um, so you can see here, this is just a one element model um, for, for creep. Um, we've got a lot of information here. Um, so there is no, there is no mesh, meshing capabilities within the, the Nastran editor. Um, so we can see we've got grid points here and then those grid points um, come together with a, a C quad element, so a, a quadrilateral element here, and it's parabolic because we've got that eight. Um, so there, there is no meshing capabilities to um, to create those elements. Um, so it's really meant, like I said, to be paired with a, a pre or post processing uh, application. Yeah, and just to, to interject real quick, but the only video that I can think of would be if you go to the Nastran product page. 
on the Autodesk website. Uh, there's a real quick, I did put together a real quick like one minute overview video of it and it's it's kind of punchy and jokey, you know, kind of uh, kind of funny, but it's it's the idea is just to you know, show you some of the capabilities that we have inside the editor. Right, yeah, so um, it, you can take a, a simulation mechanical model. Um, so I know I created a, a random vibration model for a customer. We took it from a, uh, a linear static model or a modal analysis model, brought it into the editor, and then made some modifications to this bulk data file, adding in some cards here and there uh, to switch it over to a, a random vibration analysis. Um, so th I think that's really where the editor kind of can excel and, and pair well with simulation mechanical, is that you can, um, you know, if you can't run the analysis you're looking for in sim mechanical, you can generate a bulk data file with the mesh, um, some loading, and then you can go into the editor, make some changes, um, and there's a really great help system um, with the editor. So if we were to press F1 here, it's going to bring up the, um, the help, and we can see what the format is for this card. Um, so like the creep card um, may not be exported by simulation mechanical, um, but we can go in and we can manually add it, and we know what each one of these parameters is going to be, um, or, or what it should be, and it, it gives us some, some more information here, so we know if it needs to be an integer or a real number, um, what that default value is going to be, and then it explains kind of um, you know the equation typically used um, for that value. Um, so let's see. Uh, William has a, another question here about um, is there a table of comparisons comparing SimMech to um, Autodesk Nastran? And um, I, I don't think we have a list, a, a direct comparison of those capabilities. Um, I, I think they're meant to kind of uh, you know complement one another. Um, so there may be some strengths to some of the Sim Mechanical solvers. Um, there may be some other strengths to the, the Autodesk NAS transolvers, um, but we can take a look. Um, there may be on our .com site some more information there. Yeah, we've got, it's kind of a high level overview comparing, you know, the different mechanical products that we have now. Okay. And I did just hear from um, Sulop, the product manager for um, some mechanical that that issue we ran into with exporting the um, modal analysis that's fixed with the um, the app that I mentioned at the start um, so that's available on the app exchange um, there's some um, improvements to the uh, Nastran export functionality as well as the contact uh, Nastran contact generation functionality there um, so let's just see go back. Don't see the comparison here. That does go over I think the short videos here for each one of these describing um, some of the capabilities. Oh, here we go. That doesn't. There we go. Compare. Um, so here we can see comparison between um, Nastra and Incad and Simulation Mechanical, um, but I don't think there's a comparison here between all the Sim Mechanical solvers and all the the Nastra um, solvers, um, and what the options are there. And again, if, if you want to find this on the uh, the dot com, uh, you just go to um, products and simulation mechanical, and then the compare option there. All right, it looks like we've um, let's see, run out of uh, questions here. So I'll give everyone a, another minute or two to um, to ask any questions, and then um, you know, if not, we'll we'll end the session here. Uh, 
Okay, well, um, it looks like there's no more questions, so I want to thank everyone for um, joining us this morning. Um, this uh, this um, PowerPoint and presentation will be available on um, a box page, um, and that's available. Let me just pull that up here. Um, if you go to autodesk.box.com forward slash simmec11, and we'll also post this on um, the uh, Autodesk uh, Sim360 YouTube channel this recording this presentation. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining this morning.